So we've removed the vanity from the bathroom. Now we have a bare spot in the floor where there is no vinyl plank because last time we worked around the vanity, which is what you should do. So now we have to repair this floor because we're going with a pedestal sink that has no bottom on it, okay? So this has all got to be filled in and let's get right into it. Uh, so what we gotta do to fill this in, we gotta get rid of all of the boards that are cut and the boards that are not cut we can reuse so this is cut on the end we got to get rid of that one get rid of that one uh this is an end cut we have to get rid of that one and this one here also we got to get rid of that one we can however reuse this one which is good because it's got a circular cut so we don't have to redo that and we can reuse this one this one goes all the way to the wall so that's going to separate everything right there so let's right now get all of the bad boards that are cut we will get them all up and out again we're going to keep this one because we can use that for uh that way we don't have to make that cut again and we can reuse this one as well so we'll leave that there okay now that we've got all of those out we're basically just starting back off finishing up this room without a vanity there so that's not going to be bad at all let me get some boards and let's get to it Okay, so uh, we got our spacers here. Anytime we're doing marking out our boards, we always got to have our spacers so that we can get the accurate expansion gap that we need. Vinyl plank, you're going to be good with a quarter inch expansion. There's no need to go a half inch or uh, three eighths or anything like that. And most spacers, they have a quarter inch setting on them. So this, these are the Roberts ones here. This is a quarter, a half, and then you can actually stand it up and use this portion of it. And it is one inch. So these are nice. You can actually get this little combo pack from Home Depot or something. This right here is a nice little all you need uh, combo pack for installation of vinyl plank and laminate anyway uh, it's got your little mallet your tapping block spacers and a pull bar so this is basically everything you need it's all in one package no need to go out and buy a whole bunch of different things this one has it all right here again you can usually get these at home depot lowe's any pretty much pretty much any box store that's going to sell vinyl plank and laminate which they all do you can pick this up in that department so we're going to take our full board since we got this one that we're reusing put back down. I'm going to take my full board and it does reach. So I'm just going to go ahead and install this one back in. And get it tapped in there. Now, uh, we're going to turn this around to make sure again the marking on these so we're going to we want a quarter inch expansion up here also on that so the marking we want to come straight down to the edge of this versus where it's going to actually touch right here and this right here is going to be a quarter inch right here so just mark it right there on that edge here and cut it on that mark and then you're going to have your expansion for this end here now that we got our board cut, I want to take, you can check this out right here. So if you'll look straight down on the back of this, where you score and snap them, you always have a little bit of extra backing sticking out there. So you want to be sure to take and just trim that off so you have a, have a flat edge on it and you don't have any extra backing sticking out. Now if you look, it's flat on this edge, so that's not going to interfere with your expansion. lock my end joint in first and then raise up just a little bit and tap in okay so on to the next one here i'm going to take this is the tub over here that we worked up against so i'm going to take and shave off this little locking mechanism right here on the end we got just that little bit again just to have a clean edge all the way to the uh, tub so the little bitty bit right there don't mess with our expansion we want to try to keep that stuff pretty true uh, the expansion is really important okay so I'm gonna place it there and stick me a spacer stick me a spacer down here just to get my marking and what I'm gonna do now 
since I already had this cut, I'm going to type my board that I had cut for this, stick it on here and mark it out, okay? I'm just going to get my side marks on my commode here, on my toilet flange, get my side mark there and my side mark right there. Then I can take the other board that I already had cut and use it to make my circle cut. I can line up this edge and this edge with those. Make sure it's flush, nice and lined up here, all the way around. And as long as these two marks here are lined up good, you can use that to trace out your circle, just like so. That should fit right in there now. And there we go. So if you'll notice here, where we pulled the vanity out, there is no baseboard, but we're gonna to need to put baseboard there to finish out our wall. So what I wanna do is make sure, it's gonna be a huge gap here whenever I put it down now, but when I put my baseboard there, then I will be have my same expansion gap as this one here, okay? So I'm gonna leave it to the end of this piece here versus going all the way in, okay? Because we want our base to fit proper without having without it setting up on this or any problems like that so this time since i am going directly to the edge of that on my bottom piece i am going to mark it exactly where the uh, wear layer stops because i don't need expansion because i already have it exactly where i want it on the other end Again, after I lock my end joint in, put it down there like so, lock it in, and give it my, I have to give it just a little wiggle to make it seat real nicely on the end joint. Then we're going to raise up, tap it in. Almost every single locking product, almost every single, there are some that you can just lay flat on top and tap down, but almost every uh, locking mechanism floor has to be raised up at an angle. So get in the habit of that. It's just gonna make your life a lot easier. Okay, so this is our next piece and we still have it all cut out. So that's good. We don't have to cut our next, we don't have to make a, another circle cut there. It's gonna save us a little time. We'll put it down, get our expansion up there. And again, you see that I got an angle on it just to make sure that it sets all good. Now, right here, the exact same thing again. We're gonna line up our end right here with that one and cut straight off with our wear layer here. And the, again, that's just gonna keep the proper expansion down there for when we install our baseboard back. I wanna point out here, when I'm doing this, if you'll notice, I didn't think about this a while ago, but I have my board actually turned around backwards if i laid it down here and marked it like the like this the way that it typically installs i'm going to be cutting off my wrong end so every time you mark a board like that simply turn it around line the other end up and mark it and then you can flip it around and this would be the board that you need and you'll have the right end cut for it to lock in here uh, let's see here so we got we got this and this. I want to actually cut this off a little bit so I can get me a joint about in the center of that it's just going to be for a better look. So what I want to do with that, I want to turn my board around, butt it up to the tub here, and get me a mark in between these two expansion gaps right there. Now I can cut that off, and that's going to separate my joints and it just makes for a better look if you can keep them away from one another uh, starting off with a full piece that was going to be straight over here would have been another joint that's just my personal preference i don't like to see joints line up like that so i always try to keep it as random as absolute possible whenever i'm installing a vinyl or hardwood or laminate floor it just makes for a better looking floor again that's just my opinion 
Okay, we got that there. Now, once again, we're going to turn our piece around backwards and mark it off and go ahead and get our length cut on this. That way the length is going to fit and then we'll lock these two and do our scribe. So right there, I got my end joint right. Marking it directly down to the wear layer. And let's lock the end joint in. I want to be real precise on getting it straight and even right here. If you want to, you could even do this. It's going to ensure that you do get it right. Uh, if you want to take your piece and lock the back of it in right there. So by the eye, looky right here, let me show you something. So by the eyes, this actually looks pretty good right here. But when you go to lock it into an adjoining piece, you can see the gap right there. So that's why this is a good idea, just to make sure that you get these joints right, right there. So we put it down there, there we go. Now we got it all knocked in tightly. Once I get that done, then I can take that, discard it. Okay, so now we got this where we want it. We wanna make sure that we get it exactly on top of our next row. So this is gonna be the row that fits right here. And we want to make sure we get this exactly on top of this existing row, okay? If we're off either way, a little bit this way or a little bit this way, it's not going to fit properly right here, okay? That's the thing about scribing. You have to have it exactly setting where it needs to be or else you won't have the results you want whenever you're done scribing, okay? But scribing is the best technique for getting the fit you want. So I'm just going to take one of my scrap pieces that I've got here and I'm going to cut the back off of it. Again, I'm just making me a scribe board. I want to cut the back off of it just a little bit. And because I want a quarter inch, this is actually a quarter inch itself here. But by the time that I put me a mark down there and uh, my pencil mark and this quarter inch, and then if I cut my mark, it's going to be actually probably about three eighths because you're going to have the thickness of the mark also. So we want to be careful with that, depending on what kind of trim you use. If you do that, you may have too big of an expansion gap. Okay. So I'm going to take and just trim this tongue down just a little bit. Let me show you something right here. So this has a little bit of a locking mechanism. If you look right at the point of my blade, you can see a little lip right there that causes that to lock in. Right there, I'm just going to take that lip off, and that way, that's about the thickness of my lead. And when I take that off and use my mark, that's going to be right back to a quarter inch where I want to be, okay? We got that cut now. I'm going to take my scribe piece, butt it directly up to my wall right there, and just use this to... If it's all the way to my wall right there, then I can take my pencil and put a mark right there okay it's important that you keep this level if you go up or down it's going to be shorter okay so you want to have it level and that's going to give you an accurate accurate marking okay so watch my mark if i have it crooked see how it makes it shorter so it's important to keep this level as you're doing this okay I'm just going to use this to mark all the way down the wall. Okay. Now that I have that marked out, I can take now and simply take my, my uh, dolphin knife here with my concave blade and I'm going to just cut right on that mark all the way down. Okay, we got this completely cut and ripped down to size now. It's time to put it in. I'm going to go ahead and push it over and lock my end joint in. Once again, I want to do this and use a little dummy board to make sure I get my joint even. Uh, it's a lot easier to do that now than when you get it actually in this little gap where it belongs. A lot easier to get it perfect right now. 
I'm going to use this just to make sure I do have a good and you can see that one that one actually looks nice and clean it's nice right there so I'm going to go with that take that back off and again we want to have our spacer down on the end so we get our expansion I'm going to have the help of a a pull bar and a pry bar and a rubber mallet to get my last piece in it's just going to make it a lot easier rather than sitting and fussing with it with my fingers okay so uh, again I've got my spacer down here to make sure I keep my quarter inch on the end and as always you want to raise it up and get that get that little bit of a uh, elevation on it there so that it will lock in while I have it up I'm going to take my pry bar and just kind of because as this goes down it's going to also come in to the next piece so push it all the way down make sure my expansion is proper down here as it goes down again I'm just gonna kind of work that in there just like so okay once that sets down like that then just to make sure it's locked in there good I'm gonna take my little pull bar and a rubber mallet and I'm gonna just give it a little tap like that or you can actually take and just get it in there pull up on it like that and that's going to seat it also okay just a little tap it in make sure everything is seated nicely and we don't have any issues okay so if you're remodeling your bathroom and you run into this situation this will help you out i'm sure of it thank you guys for tuning in to the channel until next time fbsb's out